To be honest, I didn't really know what I wanted to call this video. The planets I usually talk about on this channel typically only have like one or two things that set them apart. This one orbits a pulsar, this one's on a weird orbit, this one I just find interesting. It's pretty rare that a planet has more than a handful of things that set it apart. That's why I particularly like the planet Felinciom, a rare type of hot ice giant, which is already interesting enough, that also has the potential to host a Trojan planet. So I was pretty excited when I heard about this. So far, there aren't any confirmed planets that exist orbiting brown dwarfs, the objects bigger than planets but smaller than stars. There are candidates, but they're usually either unconfirmed, or there's uncertainty as to whether or not the object they orbit is actually a brown dwarf or just a really small star. It's not because this is rare, it's just hard to find planets around brown dwarfs. There are also very few planets we found on polar orbits perpendicular to their star's equators. Because of the way planetary systems form, the overwhelming majority of planets should be on equatorial orbits, not orbiting along their star's poles. And while this isn't necessarily rare, we don't know of too many planets that orbit two or more stars at once. There are a bunch of confirmed ones like Kepler-16b or TOI-1338b, but there aren't enough for it to be considered common. Well, now we have a candidate for a planet that does all of that at once. It potentially orbits a binary pair of brown dwarfs on a polar orbit, making it extremely rare and definitely the first of its type ever found. I should emphasize here though that it is still a candidate and not actually confirmed to exist, but the paper proposes it does say they have strong evidence for it, and that a planet existing here is pretty much the only thing that explains the data. And not only that, but there aren't just two brown dwarfs in the system. There are potentially up to four. What we know so far about the system is that there is at least one pair of brown dwarfs orbiting one another, named 2M1510AA and AB. Interestingly, these two brown dwarfs eclipse each other from our perspective, meaning we can see one pass in front of the other every orbit they make, which is about every 20.9 days. They're also very similar in mass, with AA being 40 Jupiter masses, about half as big as the least massive stars, and AB being 39. Then there's another object nearby that's the same spectral type as the smallest red dwarfs, and potentially a fourth brown dwarf in the system as well, though that's unconfirmed. The planet candidate, which is called 2M1510ABB, orbits the eclipsing binary of brown dwarfs. However, there's an extremely high amount of uncertainty as to what exactly this planet is and how far away it is from the pair. Really, the paper, which I'll link in the description, only says that there must be some planet in the system somewhere orbiting the eclipsing binary due to precession in the orbits of the binary. They know this because there isn't any other object in the system emitting light, and since planets don't emit light, that must be what's causing it. The problem is, there's no current way to know anything else about the planet other than it exists. I say that about a lot of planets, but this time I really mean it. The only thing we can say is that some kind of planet probably exists orbiting these brown dwarfs. There's an extremely wide range of possible orbits and sizes this planet could be, including a 10 Earth mass planet taking 100 days to orbit the pair, smaller than Neptune, and a 100 Earth mass planet on a 400 day orbit, about the size of Saturn. And there's a whole bunch of possibilities in between. So everything about this planet, if it exists, from its temperature to mass to environment, is anyone's guess. And unfortunately, it'll be hard to confirm its existence as well. Astrometry, detecting planets by seeing how the stars move as they're pulled by a planet's gravity, isn't precise enough in this case. Direct imaging won't work because the planet would be too close to the pair to make out. And as previously mentioned, it doesn't emit any light. But there are a few things we can say. One, if it exists, it orbits the two brown dwarfs at once, making it a circumbinary planet with two suns and all that. Two, it must be on a polar orbit, meaning it must be perpendicular to the pair's equators. As I've mentioned already, this is very rare. When planetary systems form, the material usually collects on equatorial orbits, so that's where the planets form. For planets to be on polar orbits, they must have either been scattered there by another planet, or the entire disk the planets form out of must also be on a polar orbit. That second scenario actually isn't unheard of either. The star HD 98800 b has a protoplanetary disk perpendicular to its equator that could have planets in it. That star itself is also part of a quadruple system, which could be similar to 2M1510. And three, we can say it's probably young. The system is around 45 million years old, which is very young in stellar terms. For comparison, the solar system is 4.6 billion years old, about 100 times older. Given its range of possible masses, the planet being a gas or ice giant is more likely than it being rocky. So we could have something similar to Neptune or maybe Saturn here. And the larger a planet is, the more likely it is to host interesting moons. Just to clear this up while I'm on the topic too, I consider objects big enough to be spherical orbiting brown dwarfs as planets. The definition of planet isn't really something I want to get into because it's completely pointless. 
Pluto is still a really interesting place no matter what it's defined as, and the whole planet debate is really just a massive waste of time. But if it orbits a brown dwarf and is big enough to be round, I don't see why it wouldn't be a planet, not a moon. Especially in this case if this planet is closing in on or even exceeding the mass of Saturn, which is a possibility. Also, this planet is probably cold if it exists. Most of its possible orbits are over 100 days long, and the brown dwarfs it orbits are both around 0.0006 times as bright as the sun. The light they emit is also very red, so if this planet exists, depending on how far away it is from the pair, it could have very dimly lit red skies. So, we can say that if there is a planet here, then it orbits an eclipsing binary pair of brown dwarfs on a polar orbit, and is likely young. That's pretty rare, and even though we know nothing about this planet, it is still very interesting. If this planet is confirmed, it will be the first ever known to orbit a brown dwarf, let alone two at once, let alone two at once that are then orbited by potentially one to two additional brown dwarfs. It would also add to our collection of polar planets, which there aren't many of. There's AC Hercules b, a planet candidate on a polar orbit around its star, but it's also unconfirmed and there's not much else known about it. So, if I had to guess, I'd say this planet is probably somewhere around the size of Neptune or Saturn, making it a gas or ice giant that's very cold. It'd probably have dark red skies due to the low levels of light it receives, and depending on exactly how far away it is from the pair, and how massive it is, it could have some interesting moons. Usually with videos like this I try to say more about what its environment could actually be like, but in this case there's so much uncertainty we really have no idea. The whole 2M1510 system is about 120 light years away from Earth, which isn't close but also isn't that far either. But there are a lot of brown dwarfs much closer. There are actually some estimates that say they even outnumber stars. Of course by that point you start blurring the line between brown dwarf and rogue planet. The point is, planets with environments like 2M1510 ABB could be pretty common, even if orbital configurations like it aren't. While this planet, if it exists, would be unique for being on a polar orbit around an eclipsing binary of brown dwarfs with other objects in the system, it wouldn't be unique because it orbits brown dwarfs. There are probably countless planets like it in the galaxy, and if we find others, it could tell us a lot about this one. Planets with dim red skies may be fairly common, and they won't just be gas or ice giants. There could be rocky planets with and without atmospheres, ice shell worlds with subsurface oceans, and I've even seen some research that suggests that planets with oceans made of liquid oxygen might actually be fairly common around brown dwarfs specifically due to how they form. Point is, while we may not know much about this planet, it's only the start of what will probably become a very interesting type of planet to study. Brown dwarf systems are essentially a cross between regular star systems and rogue planets, just like the brown dwarfs themselves being between planets and stars. So hopefully we know more about the system soon with its particularly unique brown dwarf planet candidate and others like it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.